So, hello everybody. Um, I'm going to be uh, talking about um, yet another registration method. Um, throughout these three days, you've heard about several different um, options that you have and you want to find um, correspondence between your coordinate systems uh, for your input images. Um, and I'm going to explain you um, yet another scenario for which we found a new registration solution. So, so far in the course, you have heard about surface-based registration, but um, the command to do that would be MRIS register. Uh, we talked about FSL register, VD register um, in uh, today's tutorials. Then Martin um, described MRI robust register uh, during the longitudinal analysis. And what I'm going to introduce is um, MRI CVS register, where CVS stands for Combined Volumetric and Surface Based Registration. Um, here I'm giving you a quick summary of all the different morphs that you might have encountered or you should have encountered uh, during these uh, tutorials. So um, we have um, transformation files that are including rigid and affine transformations, and the extensions for those are. DAT, LTA, XFM, FSL, NET. Um, in the future, we are trying to sort of just um, converge towards using one of them for historical reasons. We are um, currently supporting all of these, but uh, we are trying to converge to just using the .LTA format um, in the future. When you have such a transformation file, um, as you have uh, done it in the exercises, you can use MRI wall to wall in order to apply that transform and resample a volume into the new, uh, new space. When you run surface-based registration, you get a file um, called sphere.reg, and that encodes the spherical, the spherical morph. And in order to apply that transformation, you need to use um, the MRIS resample command. Now, in the nonlinear volumetric morph that I'm going to be presenting, we are going to produce an M3Z uh, file, or in a previous version, a TM3D file. Again, for applying uh, such a transform to your volume, you can use MRI wall to wall, or in case of the TM3D file, the apply morph command. So, why am I introducing <laughs> you um, yet another uh, registration solution? So far, we uh, told you about the advantages of the surface-based um, registration. It does an excellent job uh, aligning cortical folds. However, it does not apply to non-cortical structures. Um, there are plenty of volumetric registration solutions out in the literature, and they do a great job overall aligning uh, different uh, brain structures. However, in general, they have a hard time aligning folding patterns. So, um, we wanted to have a solution that combines the strength of these two different uh, registration strategies and have a solution that aligns both the cortical and subcortical um, areas for further analysis. Uh, you have seen this picture uh, already several times uh, in this course. So this is, again, just a demonstration of why it is so hard to align uh, folding patterns uh, when you have two volumes. So the colorful uh, peel and white matter surfaces were extracted uh, from subject one, and they get overlaid on the uh, grayscale intensity image of another uh, subject after these subjects were globally aligned using an affine transformation. So you see that overall globally, the two brains are well aligned. However, the folding patterns um, are not matching. So we want to do a better job at that. Again, this is just another demonstration, just to show you um, what kind of problems we are facing when we are not using uh, highly accurate nonlinear registration. So here's our template, and we use this image to extract the surfaces from. Um, now we find I finally align another image um, from subject two to subject one. Then you can see again, overall, we have a good correspondence in between the images, but um, the cortical areas are not well aligned. Now I can use a nonlinear volumetric morph, uh, which uh, definitely improves the correspondence in between the two volumes. However, if I zoom in, I can show you that there's still some inaccuracies that uh, remain. So this, this is the affine solution, a nonlinear solution, and this is what we want to improve. 
So the solution that I'm presenting today is, a, uh, is called the Combined Volumetric and Surface-Based uh, Method, or CDS Register. Um, it has three components. Uh, one, component, one component is the spherical alignment. Uh, we want to bring the cortical um, areas as close to uh, register as possible, so we use that as an initialization step. Given that this alignment takes place uh, in the 2D domain, we need to have a step that propagates this solution from the 2D domain to the 3D domain because your volume lives in a three-dimensional space. And then as a last step, as a last component of this uh, registration, we are going to do a volumetric alignment or an adjustment so that the subcortical areas are just as well aligned as your cortical areas. So let me show you uh, some resulting uh, resampled images um, from this running this algorithm. So here we have the template. Again, we used uh, we extracted the surfaces from this uh, template. You have the elastic morph, which is just the second uh, step of the um, registration solution that I just presented. So here you can see that the cortical folding patterns are nicely aligned, uh, but we haven't done the volumetric uh, registration step that would align the subcortical areas. And here's the output of the full algorithm. So if I click back and forth between the templates and the resampled volume, you see that uh, the alignment is really accurate. So you have a very close correspondence in between your resampled and template images. Um, this is another way of visualizing how close you are or how accurate your registration is. So what we did is on the top left corner, you have the template image uh, with the ASAC um, labels um, colored on top. And then I'm presenting an affine registration um, result. So after the, re after the registration, I just apply the transformation to the segmentation volume. Uh, here the same thing, hammer is just a representative example for a volumetric registration. And here on the bottom right, you see the solution uh, by CBS. So um, basically what you want to look at is how closely these um, segmentation maps uh, are to each other after registration. And uh, besides looking at them visually and seeing how good the agreement is in between the template and your resample subject, we have done a lot of um, quantitative analysis. So we used um, 40 subjects where we had access to both subcortical and cortical labels uh, for our subjects and computed overlap measures. And uh, both in the subcortical and in the cortical areas, um, we uh, observed uh, increased performance using um, our registration solution. Now, how can you use this tool uh, when you have a uh, free surfer? Um, the simplest way of using it is just um, typing MRICBS register and identifying the subject ID um, of the uh, image that you want to register. If you use the command like this, so you do not uh, explicitly specify a template, then the algorithm is going to align your subject to uh, a CBS atlas space. This is uh, an atlas space that we constructed from uh, 40 individuals, and, um, and I'm going to show you an image of that. Uh, before running this uh, command, make sure that the subject's there is properly set, just like in most of the tutorial examples. And besides the uh, moving uh, ID flag, you have lots of different uh, arguments and options, and I'm going to list uh, some of them. So um, if you want to identify your template uh, explicitly, then you can do that with the template option um, or the template flag. flag. So using that, you can uh, do a pairwise registration between two different subjects from your uh, population. If uh, your template subject happens to be in a different directory because um, you assembled your data set in a way that they don't live in the same uh, folder or directory structure, then you need to identify the template directory with this template dir uh, flag. And if you don't want to um, have your outputs written into the standard or the default directory, which would be just the CVS directory under uh, your subject ID, 
then you can also specify that using the earlier uh, flag. Again, just like with uh, all of our other commands, if you are interested in more details or more, more flag options, you can just type dash dash help and it's going to come up with uh, all sorts of detailed uh, information. Um, you can um, run, CBS register is a long registration process, so you can uh, run the procedure in three different uh, steps or um, run it with different options that make it uh, run um, slower or faster. So I'm giving you a couple of examples here for that. And then some of the other examples, some of the other options that you might want to use uh, are listed also here. So this is the CVS Atlas that we distribute with uh, FreeSurfer. Um, this was created, as I mentioned, um, via the registration of 40 different subjects. Uh, here, the initial template was a randomly chosen individual from, uh, from the population. All the other uh, subjects were registered to it, and the registration process was iterated uh, for a second time. Um, so this atlas has both the volumetric and the surface-based representation, given that this is necessary in order to do a CVS registration for uh, any new subject afterwards. Now, given that uh, the initial, the very initial target uh, for, this, for the creation of the CVS atlas was a randomly selected subject, you can see a little bit of a tilt uh, if you look at uh, that subject. And this is not necessarily a problem. If you are doing a population study and you just want to make sure that uh, your, um, your subjects are all living in the same space when you do the comparison. However, if you want to report uh, your results in a standard space, for example, in the MNI uh, space, then if you use that atlas, you would need to do yet another transformation um, into that space. So um, in order to eliminate that step, we created uh, another representation of that uh, CBS atlas, but uh, in the MNI 152 space. So if you use uh, this atlas, then your results or your uh, population um, outcomes are going to be directly in this space, ready to be reported um, with respect to uh, other results that you might have computed in that space already. Some of the related commands uh, that you might want to know about if you decide to use uh, MRI-CVS register. If you use this check command, uh, it quickly looks around in your uh, directory structure to make sure that all the necessary files are available there um, before running uh, the registration process. If you decide that for some reason you want to move some of your data sets from one location to another, um, in order to run uh, the registration process, you can use this MRI CBS data copy uh, command, which will grab only the necessary uh, folders and files from your recon directories, put it in the new location so that you can run the registration process. And as I mentioned, MRI wall to wall is again going to be your tool. Uh, if you want to apply the resulting uh, nonlinear transformation to any other related file that lives in your uh, structure <coughs> space. <laughs> I'm going to be, give you a couple of commands and bring your attention to certain flags that you will need to use. So the first example um, shows you how to apply the CVS morph to a segmentation file. As I mentioned on Monday in the intro, the interpolation for uh, segmentation files um, uh, needs to be set to nearest neighbor uh, interpolation, otherwise if you try to do linear interpolation, uh, your labels are going to be all very funny and new uh, values are going to be introduced into your volume. If you um, are applying the morph to um, a, a diffusion file that belongs to the same subject, what you need to pay attention to is that first you need to apply a, a registration uh, file to your diffusion uh, volume that registers it into the anatomical space, and then you can apply the CVS transformation. This is because the CVS registration is computed between two anatomical coordinate systems, and if you haven't aligned your diffusion data into the anatomical space, then you would be grabbing the data from a third coordinate system and then mapping it to yet another one. So it's very important when you're applying the morph to make sure 
that the volume that you're applying it to lives in the same space for which you computed the registration transformation for. Um, the following command does exactly the same thing, thing that I uh, just described, but it uses the older version of the CVS morph. Uh, this only applies to you if you happen to start using CVS register uh, a couple of versions earlier, so I'm going to just quickly go through this. So the name of the command is apply morph. Uh, the morph uh, postfix is tm3d uh, in that case. Um, very similar um, arguments that you have seen before. Uh, the flags are slightly different. Again, if you're applying the CVS mark to a segmentation file, make sure you are specifying nearest neighbor interpolation. Or if you're applying um, the transformation to a related file, but that's not necessarily in the same anatomical space, uh, you need to make sure that the uh, volume first gets aligned into that anatomical space. <clears throat> After we developed uh, this, this new registration tool um, and made sure that it performs uh, up to you know, an accuracy that uh, we required uh, for our applications, we started playing with it and applying it to diffusion tractography. So our question was that if we use uh, this registration method, which is computed based upon uh, structural images, whether uh, we can obtain a highly accurate uh, registration in between our diffusion tractography, or do we need to use any information from the diffusion data set in order to get uh, a better alignment. So our conclusion that we described in this paper was that because we are using uh, such a high accuracy um, cross-subject registration, our alignment uh, of the tract is actually better or more successful than uh, volumetric registration methods that use either uh, diffusion or tractography information. So here I'm showing you uh, just a visual representation of our uh, results. So here when we are um, aligning the tracts, the skinnier the tracts are, um, so this is a mean track, uh, after we are aligning subjects, to, uh, to a template space. So the skinnier that track looks like, the more agreement we have in between the tracks in the mapped space. So you can see that compared to the uh, linear and a nonlinear volumetric solution identified by Flirt and FA Flirt, CVS has the most, most compact and um, skinniest track solution uh, in this space. We also have uh, quantitative uh, results and description of uh, our performance. Uh, here I'm just showing you three different tracts that we evaluated the algorithms with, the CST, the IRF, and the ANSMET. And yet another um, application or another domain where CBS uh, recently um, was successful is uh, mapping functional MR uh, results into a common space and then comparing different populations. So that was in a framework of collaboration with um, MIT, uh, the MIT lab, uh, the density chemistry. And uh, very quickly, I'm going to tell you about uh, some ongoing development and applications where we are um, trying to uh, use uh, CBS's uh, strength. And that is the ex vivo, in vivo alignment of um, images. Uh, actually, the original development or, it, or the idea to develop CVS, um, or this complex registration method, came, came from the problem of not being able to accurately align in vivo and ex vivo uh, acquisitions of either the same subjects or different subjects. And um, right now we are getting to the point where we can actually uh, modify and also validate uh, the outcome of CBS applied to that particular uh, population. As you can imagine, this data set is a little bit harder to get access to. Uh, even though we are routinely scanning uh, ex vivo samples, um, manually registering and processing them uh, do take a longer time. So uh, we are still uh, in the process of evaluating um, uh, this particular uh, aspect of uh, the CBS registration. <coughs> um, I'm going to show you a couple of results uh, from uh, that work. So here, um, 
on the left hand side you see um, the in vivo acquisition that was used as a target image uh, in that application. Then um, we have the same in vivo acquisition, but here we are just masking uh, one of the hemispheres, given that our ex vivo sample had only a single hemisphere. And on the right hand side, I'm showing you a two step and the full CBS solution. So, two different stages of the CBS registration uh, process. Currently, I can only show you images, so again, overlaying the surfaces that were extracted from the target image uh, with respect to the intensity volumes. As I mentioned, we are working on uh, manually labeling some of these data sets to be, to be able to provide quantitative results uh, to describe the performance. And this is all I have to say. Can I answer any questions? there's no questions that we are going to move into future directions. So four of us are going to um, talk about some interesting um, new research topics that, or tools that are not yet included in uh, FreeSurfer, but hopefully in the near or long term future they are going to be. So four of us are going to be presenting, I'm going to take up the first